Good day, good evening, good morning, good night, depending on when you watch it. It's social media. This is live. We're, we're discussing today the Interception of Communications Act. I'm joined on this emergency episode of Plain Talk by former opposition senator, criminal attorney, well-known political spokesperson, Wayne Sturge. Good day, Wayne. Good day, Philip. Thanks for responding on such short notice. There are so many things going on in the country right now that people may not realize that <coughs> one of the most <coughs> draconian pieces of legislation ever, I mean, this is straight out of George Orwell. Yeah, it is. It is. And and the thing is, um, those who are looking on um, will be misled into thinking that the bill has something to do with um, prisoners making phone calls and lawyers speaking with prisoners on the phone and that's just <coughs> probably two or three clauses of the bill and there are 28 clauses so the narrative um, started when the attorney general um, when he moved the bill in the senate on the second reading he started all by saying well this morning we intercepted a, a call from prison a hit we intercepted a hit someone was calling a shot from prison and um that's that's the general tenor and everyone since that has um, been taken down that pathway but the bill has nothing to do with that and interestingly <coughs> if a hit was ordered from prison um, that's at, at the very least conspiracy to, to kill um, I looked on, on, on social media I looked in the conventional media to hear about someone being arrested for it or charged for it and we have a um, proactive police commissioner who would go on, on he would go yes and he, he would tell you he would go in the prison we are still waiting to hear about it so it, sh it shows in essence so wait 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 wait, wait. Yes. pump that yes are you saying then that they've they've intercepted without needing a law to intercept it because they already have laws yes. that allows them yes to intercept mm-hmm there are two regimes. The first regime is you intercept with a warrant and <coughs> that regime has a safeguard so that you have to satisfy a judge that uh, without this interception it would be extremely difficult if not impossible to get any evidence of um, a crime being, a crime a being crime committed. Progress, right? Right, but there are the safeguards and then there's <coughs> another regime right in section 6 of the act where you can intercept calls um, but you cannot use it as evidence you can intercept it without a warrant so you don't need to go ju to, to a judge to obtain a warrant to intercept you simply intercept and um, but you can't use it but you can't use it but as the evidence. commissioner of police use it to make an arrest yes because if you, you intercept it you can't use it as evidence in a <coughs> case, but it is you've intercepted a, the possible commission of a crime right can the commissioner of police use that information? information? Yes, he can. That's the purpose of it. But how does he build his case, though? Well, he has the information, and he confronts the um, the um, person. But if they deny it, you can't go to court. <laughs> you play the tape and say, "Listen, there's your voice." Right, but I'm saying <coughs> even if the person whose voice it is, if he denies it, denies it. Well, you can't is he, use is the charged? interception court. You can't use the interception court, no. right? So, but on the is. face of it, yes. on the face of it, using that as a leverage mm -hmm. for an interception, interception of communications act, it sounds like that's something you might want to consider having. But then, if you use that rationale mm -hmm. and then pile on it draconian human rights eviscerating. Mm -hmm. um, law inside of here mm -hmm. because it's not just limited to prisoners. No, it's not. The smallest <coughs> part of this is limited to prisoners. Yes. And I asked you off camera why don't we, Jess, and why doesn't the independent Senate especially, why don't we advocate for a limiting of this act to its purpose? Because that's not the purpose of the act. I'm saying they're, to you, I get what you're saying. They are selling going it. down that road. They are selling it. But we're going down that road. But I want Trey and Tobago to understand. Because when Trey and Tobago look at something, mm -hmm. the first thing they want to hear is, is there a solution? Right. And the best solution to this is for opposition, official mm -hmm. opposition, 
to request of the government that they go back to their drafting board mm -hmm. and limit the draconian powers mm -hmm. of this right. to the interception of communication between prisoners and their conspirators. Well, you, sh you shouldn't necessarily limit it to prisoners because there are persons who are not pr prisoners who are committing offenses. Right? So you can't necessarily limit it. But the thing is, if you are listening without a warrant and you gather information or intel which suggests that this person is involved in serious activities and so on, then at that point, shouldn't you approach a judge and say, Absolutely. listen, Absolutely. And that's the point. Already have this. Because they need to be safeguards. <coughs> because mm -hmm. I understand we're living in a time of instant communications now. Mm -hmm. So... And I am always concerned about that, that people could use devices to set you up. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Um, they, could, they could do things, and I don't want to give them too much information, but they yeah. could do things that they otherwise could not have done were it not for these devices. So now these devices and the communication using these devices can be a pathway to crime. I get that. Yes. But all of our, all of our legislating must take the rights of the citizen into account. Yes, but you know what? We are doing the same thing they are doing. We are being warped into um, a discussion about the prisoner. Right. Okay? About the commission of a crime. <coughs> right. Let me, let, let me just say this, um, first of all. If you are in prison and you are making calls as a gang leader, then that person automatically should be subject to an intercept. He's in prison. He's a, a criminal. That's, that by itself is a criminal act. <coughs> right. Using a phone, unauthorized. And I wanted to ask you this. Mm -hmm. I was told that there are jammers in the prison. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the jammers could be unplugged. Yes, they could be. So why would we have jammers that could be unplugged? Well, listen. Why should prisoners be allowed to make phone prison calls? Office. Right. Let me, let, let, let me say this. Up until Nigel Lefritus, who was the Vice President of the Senate, up until he made his con contribution, nobody else was really talking about that issue. <coughs> and he said something in his um, contribution which shows why the jammers are being unplugged. It's not that prison, o prison officers are unplugging them. National Security wants the jammers unplugged. Because once you unplug the jammers, then you allow the prisoners to talk. When you allow the prisoners to talk, you could easily gather you intel could, you could easily, right? right but right. if you so it's a balancing act if you want the intel then unplug the jammers but if you unplug the jammers then the prisoner will be able to call a hit so you have to make up your mind what you want right because the cell phone is not the only way you but can why not, why not put a safeguard <coughs> for a judge or or a, a specific third party to be able to listen to the evidence. Ju I don't think judges have time for that. That's the first thing. And the second thing is that's not So there are no safeguards that you can put there? There are safeguards with respect to the warrant. You know, be before you even get to the warrant stage, what I'm saying mm -hmm. is the information that you're, you're, you're gathering mm -hmm. because a crime is being committed on this call. Mm -hmm. So you have that information. Who should be allowed to decide if this is in fact a crime? Well, ultimately, the... the <coughs> police and guard in the intel um, based on their training would know if a crime is being committed they are trained and have experience to detect crime and if there is any doubt or gray area they approach the director of public prosecutions who would tell them well um, this is enough to charge so what should the it? DPP be the <coughs> should the DPP be the person listening no no not listening but should the DPP be the person to qualify if it is in fact evidence of a crime he, th that already exists so yeah. that already exists. Yes, he does. He is the one who supervises. So the only thing that they try that they say they're trying to accomplish mm -hmm. is to make it possible for them to obtain evidence without a warrant. Yes. When they actually listen. The thing is, what they are selling us is that hits are being carried out. You want the hits to stop being carried out? Plug in the jammers. Plug in the jammers. But they don't want to. The vice president. So, so to said. fix the problem <coughs> with <coughs> plugging the jammers, fix, fix no more hits calling no more for hits. prison. No more hits. It's impossible. I, on on days when the jammers are on, you drive past the prison on Frederick Street. Can't use the phone. You can't. 
why why put a switch or a plug? Why not hardwire it? So that nobody could interfere. Once the jammers are installed, it's jamming for life. The issue is not that... I'm just asking. You're, you're asking a question, but if you, you do that, you deprive national security. Right, so, so the reason... So we're saying... So this, I mean, again, this is for people to follow. Right. That there is a mechanism to stop prisoners from calling hits from the jail. Yes. There's a mechanism, a simple jammer. Yeah. But we have jammers that we don't use. We don't want to use it. Because we want the prisoners to make we the calls. intel. And we get intel right. from prisoner calls. Yes. So even though it's illegal for a prisoner to have a phone yes. in a jail cell and make a call, from the moment the call is made that you could intercept, a crime is already being committed. That crime, however, is not um, the most major of crimes. But the, it is a crime. But, but isn't there a proceeds of crime act? Well, that that has yes, there is. But that has nothing to do with. Um, but could, but mm -hmm. In that situation, I am saying. I just trying to get from where this became mm -hmm. intercepting hits on prisoners to taking away all the rights of all the citizens of the country. <coughs> I trying to understand because I don't get why we need a big brother spy on mm -hmm. everybody now, warrantless eavesdropping of everybody's communications just to stop what they say is happening in the prisons all right if you want to stop what's happening if you want to get the the intel from the prison get a warrant it's not it's not that difficult that's the first thing if the person is in prison and you say this restricted like movement leader, restricted movement in fact they shouldn't have cell phones right right but you try and you could jam them you could jam them so you you don't need legislation. So it's easy to stop them having cell phones, but you're not. And you could jam the cell phones, but you're not. Yeah. So those two things are the state failing to do its job for a reason. Yeah. And they say that the reason they don't want to do that job is they want to get intel between yeah. convicts <coughs> and their gangs and everything, right? Mm -hmm. And all of that makes sense. Yeah, it does. How do we stray from that to the general public? How does that become an issue now for the general public? And I'm saying this, that calls originating to and from the prison could qualify for this. Right. How does people who have no nothing to do with the prison, how do they get dragged up in this net? They get dragged up in this net because, first of all, and the Attorney General, um, it's mind-boggling that he said that, listen, they, 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 to make it simple, Throughout the Interception of Communications Act, you see the word criminal proceedings. And wherever it is used, he brought this amendment to remove the words, particular, in particular, that these things can be admissible in criminal proceedings. He's um, substituted criminal proceedings to any proceedings. So if it's any proceedings, then it's not targeting the criminal, criminal element alone. So now it's not limited to stopping what they say the purpose of yeah. the act is yeah. and now it's any proceeding so well now they could go on a goose, <coughs> on goose chase well it's it's wider in the sense that um, if you look at the act you would say well um, this act only applies to certain types of proceedings one such proceeding is the civil act asset for feature right um, that's the strictest interpretation but that doesn't prevent police officers from taking their own interpretation, which they normally do, and stretch interpretations beyond reason to use it, to attempt to listen for other purposes and for other proceedings, other types of proceedings. So what you are doing <coughs> by using the words, what does any mean? If, you, if what you have is criminal proceedings, and you you remove you criminal limited and to you criminal put, right, right and if you amend it and you remove the word criminal and you put any what does any mean unlimited right they could go on any <coughs> kind of fishing expedition right and that's, that's so if you are the target right of a, a a wayward public official they could access all of your information and not just current information either yeah this bill takes us back in time. Yes, because um, they also, in the definition section, um, they introduced the concept of stored data so that they can look backward at stored data. So things that you spoke about 10 years <coughs> ago could be used against you now? Yes. How is that, how is that constitutional? Well, it's wrong. Let me tell you why. Because under Section 20 of that Intercept Act, 
if you um, have a warrant and you listen in and you gather information that information is admissible in evidence that's the first thing if however you gather that information and some time passes and you've exhausted everything else and it is clear that you there will be no proceedings criminal proceedings with respect to that intercept the subject of the intercept then section 20 says that that information should destroy should be destroyed correct <coughs> but it's clear that that's under the regime dealing with warrants that this is warrantless yeah that does not stop the police from listening anyway and they listen and they store and section 20 doesn't apply to them so what they can do now is all that they have stored over the years which ought not to have been stored under the second regime in the first place because you didn't have a warrant you can only store what you have a, so we're have legitimizing a criminal activity. you are legitimizing state-sponsored criminal activity. Exa exactly that's what it is so they'll go back they look yes. at your bbm your whatsapp your messenger your email your dropbox your google drive your icloud your everything everything is fair game and it's not that they need a warrant to intercept when you look at the amendment so now the state could go on a fishing expedition for everybody and anything that they could use to create a prosecution if they want more or less yes and but it's not just a and there are no protections they are very limited protections if they are going to use a warrant but they don't have to but can you stop the state and i've i've been following in the united states right now mm -hmm. they've passed a law that you could compel even even social media on the on the heels of all the cambridge analytica worldwide and all of that you could compel digital companies to provide mm -hmm. all of the information that they have stored on you mm -hmm. and you could request that it be deleted that's yes you, you can we don't we are going the other way yes <coughs> we are going to create storage of people's communications regardless of how harmless it might be and use that against people in the future well, the, the danger is um, yes you can now use it even without a warrant that's the first thing but there are even bits that would be unusable in criminal proceedings but it's your private information so let's say in a situation where there's a police officer who made himself available to be screened by a political party to run as a local government councillor and was screened he was given the post he's a police officer and then he is no he, he's removed he said they said you can't do it because the people of the community don't want you there because they think they're sending a police and 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 and, and, and you're coming to to, to um, what inform inform on them and that police officer says publicly that he is for want of a better term a die-hard supporter of that political party mm -hmm. and will abide by that party's decisions that police officer now with this power for government opposition because anything could be twisted and anything could be used to create a matter that you now have to defend yourself against. Mm -hmm. It is um, quite possible. Because even though we say <coughs> that he who alleges must prove mm -hmm. and that people are presumed innocent until proven guilty, from the moment a charge or even an investigation, the owner starts to become put on you to defend yourself. Well, yes. And, and even in things as simple as the defamation statutes. Yeah. Because from the moment a claim is made, you have to defend against that claim. Mm -hmm. So it's not like you could ignore what is being said. In cases where the information could be used in criminal proceedings without a warrant, mm -hmm. police officers are going to become agents of others if they so desire and use the power of the state and the and the serious power this I, I remember Gary Griffith saying 
a police officer has serious authority in society and that ought not to be abused but we are now creating an <coughs> environment for its abuse that is exactly what is happening and and you see the the, the problem in this society is that a bill like this shouldn't even see the light of day and you have nine independent senators several of whom stood up and said um look we have a, a, a we have problems with this bill you have paul richards for instance let's start with let's start with paul paul said the media could find media practitioners could find themselves in trouble with this bill this amendment the attorney general then goes on i-95 and asks, he's asked the same question i think by deal or tony or one of them and he says yes you could be locked up <coughs> and paul richard is a media practitioner he has his concerns that the media could find itself in a spot of bother but when it when it's time to vote what does he say he says yes i'm voting for it what is the point of being an independent senator that's a real concern. The media is a check and balance in this country, whether you like them or not. Supposed to be. Supposed to be. No, and many you of can't say whether you like it or not, because if it doesn't function as what it's supposed to be, it's not a matter I'm, of life. I'm not even speaking about... I just said. I'm not even speaking about... When I say media, I'm not limiting media to conventional media. There's no such thing anymore. The conventional media rely on, to a large on extent social, media. social media Absolutely. to get news. <coughs> so, persons who are social media activists for instance could find themselves in trouble so if you are your job is to dig and dig and dig and he was speaking in the context of and deal i think was speaking in the context of um, both of them receiving calls from prison again we were limiting ourselves to prison this is not about prison and you have the attorney general saying yes you could be in trouble so you have an independent senator who's a media practitioner hearing that the media could be in trouble. It could be used against the media. It could stymie the ability of the media to get valuable information, even from prisoners. Because things happen in the prison and unless you allow them to I'm not I'm not suggesting they should be given cell phones and so on. But the media would get information from prisoners. So if you um, are going to put the media in trouble and you Mr. Richards, you are a media practitioner and you say you have these concerns and they say yes it is a concern and you could be in trouble. When the time comes to vote that's your power to vote. Why are you voting yes? There's another independent Is, Isn't this concentrating <coughs> power and bypassing the functions of the judiciary? No, the, judi ju the judiciary will have its say because um, I see now there's a move by the Attorney General for a second time to remove the requirement of a three-fifths majority so that he knows he, ap he approaches the parliament knowing that you need a three-fifths majority knowing he doesn't have a three-fifths majority but he said that one could argue if one tinkered with the bill a bit it would remove the requirement for a three-fifths tinkered majority. how i don't know he said that he can say what he wants if you but he's uh, done that in the past. He's done it in the past and sadly nobody has challenged it. But you can't approach the parliament knowing you need a three-fifths majority. And because there are things that are offensive. To the constitution. <coughs> yes. And to rights and so on. Right? So you approach the parliament acknowledging you need a three-fifths. When you realize you are not going to get the three-fifths, you say, well, I'm taking that out. And I might make a few changes and so on. You've conceded defeat when you reach the court. The court under 13, 1 and 2 of the Constitution would say, you know, um, this is disproportionate. And you are offending rights and so on, and you have to show. But before you get from here today, before it becomes matters in a court, before it gets before a judge that could strike it down for being unconstitutional, mm -hmm. it could be a very big stick that could be wielded against enemies of the political directorate in the interim yes and there was another um, independent senator who said just that that he had concerns uh, that it could be used against persons in the opposition and when the time came to vote what did he vote he voted yes there was another senator who said um we live in dangerous he she said listen this is a very dangerous bill i agree 
It's very intrusive, I agree. But you know what? We live in dangerous times. I want to ask you a question, right? Because you I are voted for the bill. You were in the Senate. Mm-hmm. So there's a government Senate and an opposition Senate uh, and 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 the independent Senate. Yes. And the independent Senate is supposed to be a check against government abuse. Yes. Supposed to be. So the opposition and the independents together is one less vote than the combined. Yes. And the only in things that <coughs> are there's the there's the there's the um presiding officer who would have a cast in vote. But she must I exercise the cast and vote. The convention is that she exercises it against the government if it comes down to a casting vote. So there are, there are 15 opposi- sorry, 15 government senators, and then you have six opposition and nine independent. So nine and six, 15. If all 15 vote one way and the government vote the other way, that's you a, a right. You have a deadlock, and then you have the. Is that convention or rule that. That's a convention. It's a so convention. Yes. They could break the convention. They can, yes. This is every time mm-hmm. this government brings one of these bills and acts to Parliament, I wonder if all of the educated people in the Senate don't realize that government is deliberately failing at securing the nation. Mm-hmm. So as to create a crime scenario that it could then use to come and piggyback on to give itself dictatorial powers. Well, <laughs> you know, look back at the um, the amendments to the SSA bill, I think it was 2016, and forget about the opposition. Look at the contributions of all of the independent senators, except Ian Rooch and um, the temporary guy, um, the little man, I forgot his name. <coughs> um, the little man. And um, look at all of them. And each and every one of them stood up to the government and said, Listen, you're not going to frighten me and tell me crime is so bad and you need this and you can't fix this without crime. And they said, No, come on, we don't buy that. And don't try to frighten us and browbeat us into voting for it. It is intrusive and it is unnecessary and we are voting against it. When the Commission of Police is on record vociferously demanding that there not be a revolving door where gun crimes are concerned. Mm-hmm. In January 2017, the Prime Minister of this country told the nation that there were 37,000 illegal guns in this country. Mm-hmm. By the start of this year, the accepted figure being touted in the Parliament and the Senate is 42,000 illegal guns. Mm-hmm. Five, we've had a net increase of 5,000 illegal guns in the country. Mm-hmm. And yet, nothing is being done to secure the nation's borders. Do and you believe that, that figure? That 42,000 guns? Yeah. 37,000 guns? I asked when he said it, who did the stock check? Exactly. How did I arrive at that? If you know you have four like the little thousand child thousand who went to the post office and saw <coughs> all the wanted posters and asked his mommy why they didn't just keep them when they came to take the picture. Yeah. It sounds as ridiculous as that. It is ridiculous. The Prime Minister knew that there were 37,000. It was like when the then Minister of National Security admitted to the Parliament that 57 women were trafficked. Mm-hmm. Use that number. Mm-hmm. 57 women were trafficked and said not another word he didn't say who he didn't say how he didn't say how he comes to know that they were trafficked because for you to know that they were trafficked you would have an idea of where they might be mm-hmm. or what and again that was 2017 we're in 2020 yeah. and there have been a change of minister of national security but nobody has ever asked or answered the question how do you know that 57 women were trafficked how how do you know it when the Prime Minister said 37,000 guns, I asked, how did you arrive with the figure? Is it an estimation based on what? Give us that information. How did that estimation increase to 42,000? Are these things being used to scare the population into supporting anything the government say? So if the sky is falling, every act 
that the Attorney General brings to the Parliament seems to be another piece in a puzzle taking us closer and closer to a totalitarian state. Well, he's from Iraq, so... <laughs> Bad dad politics. Yes. But you see the thing is... But seriously though, the cybercrime bill, the SSA amendment bill, the anti-gang bill, this bill, everything comes to the people with the nation is on fire. That the 9,000 police officers that we have cannot interdict guns on this speck of sand. This is a world where epidemiologists was able were able to track the original pig and the original in, in SARS and, and swine flu, the original bird. If epidemiologists could do this, they could find the first case of coronavirus and tell you the person was eating raw meat in a market. Why we don't bring epidemiologists to Trinidad to help? F because if we cannot, if we cannot manage the, the, the first few times I heard that there were gangs in Trinidad, I mean, I wondered how was this allowed to just happen? And then things just deteriorated. And I was thinking to myself, this couldn't be happening without the involvement of law enforcement. And the government. And the government. The commissioner of police is on record as saying both political parties have used the state and the treasury to empower criminal gangs. How is that not what we're dealing with? If the commissioner says, dry up the funding to the gangs and the gang activity ceases because they pay salaries. They pay money. That dripping gold will come free. But if the commissioner uh, fully says that, and he does that, then um, we might be looking for a new prime minister in the sense that um, look at the last bit of complaints the com commissioner had about who was getting contracts. Where are these people from? Forget Spanish, he's beat them. If you say he's a gang leader and, he, and so on. But look at the names that he called and the companies and what were the contracts for and where to, to build what and to build what where most of them to build in Digo Martin bordering Digo Martin West right most of these men who, are, who the commissioner is complaining about they are from Digo Martin West they control the ground so I want to remind Trin Trinidad and Tobago that you are one of the busiest criminal attorneys in this country. Remember at one time the, the, the Chief Justice said you, your clients was clogging the system. Was it the Chief Justice or the yeah, Attorney did, General? Yeah, I think the it chief? was uh, yeah, the Chief. Yeah. And your clients was clogging the whole criminal justice system. So you, when you speak about criminal activity on the ground, you're speaking about a certain amount of knowledge. <laughs> we, we all know a lot of them are actually my clients. So I can tell you, they have contracts, to build things, where the things are being built, in what location. So and is the state creating an environment for crime to flourish, to generate fear, to use that fear to give itself draconian but it's powers? Not, I, I don't think it's fear so much. I think it's influence because you see the thing is... No, no, you're talking influence at the, on the ground level. On the ground level. I'm talking about everybody who listens to the panic. The, the, mm -hmm. They beat the public into a panic when they come to the court, to the parliament. No, to they, these, these right, acts. they beat the public into panicking about crime, right? But they fuel it by giving contracts. That's my, that's my yeah. point. Yeah. If the state mm -hmm. is giving contracts to criminal activity that creates the environment where that activity could flourish, mm -hmm. then the state is a co conspirator. Yeah, complicit. They are complicit. That, that, there is no two ways about it. So we enter the people who are looking on at this, who, who are hearing that the Attorney General is saying that this bill is so important to end the commission of crime, but by the same token, the Attorney General is part of a cabinet of a government that is facilitating the development of gangs through funding it. We have a real problem as a yeah, country. We have a real problem. Let me tell you how bad the problem is. Um, uh, 
colleague in the Senate got some info the other day from, um, I think it's, it's in the public domain, and he indicated to me, and I posted it on, on social media, that in the year 2017, there were 1.4 million interceptions. And how many zero prosecutions? How many prosecutions? Zero. So it begs the question: Are the criminals so smart? That's the first thing that they know what. No, not but to if talk. interception of communication was such an important tool, mm -hmm. we would have some results to show. Exactly, exactly. So it's either you are actually not spying on criminals, but you are spying on everybody else. Remember before 2010, before the spy versus spy with Patrick Manning. Yeah. So what the SIA was used for uh, then. Yes. And how we ended up with the whole <coughs> Rishmi Ramnarayan fiasco mm -hmm. where she was put in charge of the SIA to end the spying or so we were told. Mm -hmm. But you, you, you see, I'm not going to seek to justify that. I wasn't um, in politics at that point and know what caused that. But what I want people to focus on is, listen, if you have 1.4 million intercepted um, communications, and you have zero prosecutions. Then who was the government listening to? That's the first thing. Would they really listen to criminals? And if they were, why no action? Why no action? Is it that the criminals um, know what to say and what not to say on 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 um on when they communicate? Right. Or is it that they prefer to listen to the cr criminals without a warrant and therefore can't use? what they obtain but is it court. is it also information is power you know mm -hmm. information is it power, is power but if you are the state and you have the state machinery you have the responsibility for the enforcement of law you could use the information that pe that you have that people are committing crime to get them to act a certain way for you that's true but power leverage but the power must be used in a, a legitimate way and for the benefit of the state citizens. but i'm saying but i'm saying that you could also use it as leverage. You could. That's, that's the danger in it. You could. And um, who's to say that that is not happening either? That's why this is so dangerous. You see, the thing is, right now, they listen without warrant. But without this amendment, they can't use anything in court. Now they are removing criminal proceedings and making it any proceedings. For now, I'll, I'll limit myself to say any proceedings would be civil and civil asset for feet here more or less and not much beyond that but it depends on the um, rule of interpretation you adopt there are several rules of interpretation when you are construing a statute but a police officer who is not trained in um, statutory interpretation he can come up and say any means any I'm listening to anybody because I, I intend to use it in any proceedings and he'll, uh, he'll charge you an attempt to use it and then, at that point, he might be told by a very bright magistrate that you can't. But between the but between charge and then, then you have they it disrupted over your, head. your life. Yeah, they have it hanging over your you head. You disrupted your life. Mm -hmm. And then you have to spend money to defend yourself. And you are not guaranteed that you're going to get back that money if you sue in malicious prosecution. Because but you forget the money. There's a lot of stress knowing that you have a charge on you. Yes, I, 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 I'm sure. Yes. And what is to prevent, while this is being touted as this panacea for criminals' communication, what is to prevent the government then using this to just focus on who it considers its political enemies? Well, who's to say that's not me? I worry about a government that spends all of its time with despots. Ghana, Venezuela, China. <laughs> I think the insinuation is clear, but um, I mean, look at what is happening in, in, in Ghana. Is it that it can't happen here? It, it's possible. Maybe it did happen in 2015. You don't know. You can't. They are, I, I, I don't believe there are much independent institutions. When the court ruled that the EBC did not have, I don't want to stray too far down this road, but when you ask that question, when the court ruled that the EBC did not have the right or the authority, to extend the voting hours, but they did. The court ruled that an a, 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 well, a wrong act was committed, but that no action would be taken. Mm -hmm. What is the public to think where the EBC and the courts are concerned? 
Look at what just took place, and I want to ask you this. This is one of the things I want to ask you. With the Law Association and the Chief Justice. It's a spent matter. I don't believe it's spent. I'm hearing lawyers saying, and um, I, have, I don't have an opinion on it at all, because actually I don't care. But, um, no, but the Law Association <coughs> said it's gotten as far as it could go. Well, that's the Council of the Law Association. The body of the law, the, the general... Disagreeing with the Council. Me, the me. Because um, I heard... But again, my only... Uh, finish. I, I heard one lawyer say, well, look at this. How is the public to perceive this? That's my question. You just, you just, a judge has ruled in favor of the Chief Justice. That's his last matter. And the minute he ruled in favor of him, he's then elevated to the Court of Appeal. I heard a lawyer. The entire thing. And says there's an appearance of bias. But That's not to say there is bias. No, but you, but justice must not only be done, it must be seen to, that, seen to be done. And, and, and to the public who are just witness to the assassination of the Chief Justice name and character because now we don't know if there is truth to any of these allegations. We don't know. Mm -hmm. I think they are saying it's better that we don't know than we do know whether it's false. But we're talking about our Chief truth. Justice. Yeah, I agree. I agree, but it is what it is. It is what it is. I'm not making an excuse for it. Um, it's not a happy outcome, but it is what it is. It's for the body, and again, that's why I keep saying there are institutions in this country, the law association, the body of lawyers is supposed to be independent. And perhaps they should vote and, and say, maybe sh we should test it. Is there politics in the, I shouldn't even ask the question. There's politics in every institution. I shouldn't even man, ask the man question. Man is a political animal. Yes, but, okay, but you're using the strict definition of politics. I'm talking about politics. Um, divisive politics, pick a side politics in the law association. In the law association. Well if when one when when if some people are getting briefs from the government when their party is in power and then when the other party is in power others, others get briefs. Then you choose the horse. You have a horse in the race. If you want briefs. Right. Well co quite a part if you want state briefs. briefs. So shouldn't again briefs. shouldn't there again be a rule mm. as to how briefs are assigned? It, it, Shouldn't it, it, there be a pre-qualification of attorneys whose names are in a random selector? Yeah, yeah there was a, a, an attorney who had um, <laughs> no wheat to him, who had no history of doing any serious cases and um, he served as an independent senator and he started getting state briefs. And when you looked at it, his, his history his voting. <laughs> His voting is one thing. Well, if you're getting state briefs, you, you will vote in, in, in... But then you're no longer independent. Exactly. That's why you. That's the point I was making back then. But when to the public looking on, how do you get them to trust the authority of the state if all of that is taking place? Yesterday, I interviewed a former Prime Minister and the answers he gave me as a Prime Minister were frightening that the drug trade has corrupted this country for decades that he doesn't know who owns the pitch lake that there, there was a reason why the Justice Scott Commission of Inquiry into the drug trade that report could not be laid in the parliament and he still doesn't know why nobody has commissioned a, 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 an inquiry since into something that so drastically affects Trinidad and Tobago. Well you say drastically but it might be drastically in a positive way also because the drug economy whether you like it or not keeps this country afloat. Whether you like it or not. He said now, yeah, this is not the first time I've heard the parallel economy. Mm -hmm. I've heard the parallel economy <coughs> is bigger than the national economy. It might be. When you say that, mm -hmm. and a former Prime Minister too, you realize that you are saying that we are accepting that we are a narco state. We yeah. are. How do you then contrast and compare Trinidad, Norway, Finland, Dubai, even Singapore? 
Singapore is half the size of Trinidad and Tobago. It doesn't have oil, it doesn't have gas. Singapore has the most draconian drug laws in the world. They tell you, you get off the plane, there's a line and a toilet. Get rid of it. You cross that line. There are no saving you. That. Oh. They have no saving you. Mm -hmm. They have some airlines, the pilot will announce, the flight attendant is walking around with a bag. If you're not sure that the pharmaceuticals that you have are legal in Singapore, throw it in the bag. Because you could get in serious trouble. How does that country, Singapore, have a 322 billion US dollar gross domestic product? Yeah, the assemblage of all that it earns. And we, with all our oil and gas, have 22 billion US. Is it that our economy is deliberately kept shrunk? by governments to allow that parallel economy to run. Is that why we've never had a commission of inquiry into the drug trade? Is that why our financial intelligence unit could publish all that it publishes and have no authority? Is that why we do not secure this nation's borders despite knowing that there is a report on the Minister of National Security's desk 20 years now that tells us exactly and precisely how to do it. Is that why? I don't think any um, I, governments I funded with dirty money. I I would hate to think so. So then we will leave it to incompetence still. To a large we extent, will leave to a large it to incompetence. The money we're spending on the curate interchange could have built the maritime security wall. The money that we're spending to eviscerate the Aripo Savannah could have built the maritime security wall. The money we wasted in the battle for the sea bridge between when we had the super fast Galatia and now when everything that took place, all the money that was lost, could have built the maritime security wall. And a maritime security wall creates a line in the sea, a virtual line in the sea, three miles out that stops and searches every marine craft entering this country and building the maritime security wall would end the drug trade, the gun trade, the dirty money that is imported into this country trade. That's the parallel economy you're talking about. The drug money that is sent here to be cleaned. I have been told that a lot of state contracts are mechanisms for doing that. Listen, if you want to stop that, Simple. And I invite you to go back and um, the same um, debate on the SSA in 2016 and listen to the contribution of Danishwa Mohabia. He was the head of the independent bench at the time. And he made a very telling point because before we debated the bill, we had a, a um, little session with the SSA for them to tell us how they work and their successes. And from 1993, 94, thereabouts, since they started the intercepting and so on, they were able to boast of one major drug bus, and it wasn't even Mono Island, which is the biggest. Right? You have to understand that the SSA has a capacity, and Danisha Mahambia was saying, listen. All of this is flourishing because we are a narco state in essence. The original remit of the SSA was drug interdiction. And if you're that morphed into the spy agency that it is now. Yes. But it started off to stop drugs. Yes. But you would not need an SSA if <coughs> the Coast Guard that is based in no, China. They, they work in tandem. Boss. The Coast Guard is tied up in Shagaramas. Why is it not tied up in South? Okay. It's on the other side of the island mm -hmm. from the theater of operations. Okay. Why? <laughs> the helicopter pilots for national security says that where the base in Trinidad Tobago requires a half hour flying time to get to the theater of operations. Right. And when they get there, they only have a half hour of time, fuel, before they have to fly back 
-hmm. the half hour they need to save half hour fuel of the land in the sea. Mm -hmm. Pilots, pilots of planes in Trinidad and Tobago told me that they've contacted the Coast Guard, saying we are making we are making circles in the sky right now over a drug transaction taking place and the Coast Guard never comes. People from Blanche Shares on the North Coast tell of stories where one fast boat will come, drop things that look like coolers in the sea with flags, and go. And an hour later, something else will pass and pick it up. Stopping the drug trade in this country has to be the most important step to right size in this country if we're talking about stopping the little contracts the paint police station and hdc projects will dry up the criminal gangs stopping the drug trade in Trinidad and tobago will break the back of the corruption and the white collar criminality that has destroyed this country uh -huh. why has no government to date dealt with it Philip let me just take you back a bit because you, you but they want an answer to that and you were a senator and you had access to the highest level of government and you have access to the criminal ground and I am just asking one question because the it. takeaway let from the Pande interview people found that as a former prime minister chair of the national security council mm -hmm. he was too evasive on those questions why hasn't any government taken action Philip, let me let me just say, um, you'll have to ask them. I wasn't a government minister, but um, let me just Why? say, <laughs> because I like the court. Okay. The court is where the drama is. Continue. Um, if the SSA stopped to its really? original remit when we had ship ride and all these things, you want to stop it? Ask Trump to um, renegotiate a little ship rider agreement and. Let US. Um, they don't even have a ship rider agreement. You could give them permission now. The United States, Canada, Japan, mm -hmm. England, France knocking on the door. They will send Coast Guard boats in the morning, three miles out at sea. We mm -hmm. will wash everything out there. That's one way. But without that, forget that in the interim. That's one way, right? But remember, Manning had a problem with that. He said that's, um, you know, seeding or sovereignty. sovereignty and rubbish. But anyway. So, so, so you will protect our maritime sovereignty at the expense of our economy and social stability? Because of the parallel economy that drugs... Absolutely. Brings. So I'm saying to you, that sounds like a stupid rationale from a prime minister. It is stupid, but it, it, it might be practical. But again, I, I tell you, go back and listen to Dan Mahavia. Because if you listen to Dan Shah Mahavia and his contribution... If the SSA sticks to its original remit, if you want to expand it beyond drugs, expand it to piracy, human trafficking, um, kidnapping. Absolutely. Any contraband. Terrorism. Are you saying, Wayne Stooge, mm -hmm. that if the government wanted to stop drug, the drug they could. Trade? They could. You ain't going to finish his sentence. Well, first, you don't need to finish First, you know, 50% of containers. That's the point because most of the drugs that come into the country don't come in. They're not coming up the Caribbean. Exactly. exactly. Fifty percent of containers, shipping containers, come off the ship and without stopping. Didn't we try to? Um, I raised that in um, a contribution in Parliament, uh, a motion on crime. I think in 2017. Right. One of my biggest points was, you have um, the scanner in the port operationalize the scanner. Is it working? I was donated to us. Is it working? The countries that Trinidad is used as a pipeline to send drugs to, mm -hmm. they have a vested interest in securing our borders. Listen. And they've offered to right. secure our borders. Right. We could move the port of Port of Spain to a much larger facility in Point Lisas and unstuff, not just scan, unstuff every container on the port. We'll find an excuse not to do it. Doma says it will slow trade down. I tell Duma, we will build where there is one shed, we will build a hundred sheds. So that unstuffing the container would be the slowest part, I mean the, the fastest part of the slow process. There is a solution to all that plagues this nation. 
if you were the attorney general I would never be of a real government I would never be if you were the attorney general of a real government could you write laws that safeguards the rights of citizens and protects the country from the criminal activity that destroyed it. You can, but you see, the thing is, most of it has nothing to do with writing laws. Look at look at this. Um, this uh, exactly, bill. looking at this. Right, look at this bill. Um, you don't need law. You already have enough law. You need to use it and use it effectively. We've been pro every time they come, they come. Interdiction, with investigation, prosecution. Right. Every time the Attorney General comes to Parliament, he says, if we have the bail bill, crime done. We had it. <laughs> it continues. Bail bill, fire anti gang bill, fire anti gang bill. You could go on and on. on. Right. But <laughs> so every one of these that says the sky is falling is bullshit. Yeah, that's rubbish. Absolute rubbish. This, the sky is not falling. Listen. And the things that we need to do to stop the sky from falling is not more it's draconian nothing. civil liberties eviscerating human rights evaporating it wouldn't, it law wouldn't intervene it, it wouldn't inter interfere with our civil rights the things we need to do would come along the lines of operations more operations secure the borders Se secure the borders but stuff the containers that's true but you have to you have to limit the remit of the ssa to deal with serious crime long ago before the ssa and still, with all the spying they're doing, they're not getting prosecutions. Long ago, when you had a system of paid informants, before they had all this spying, a, com a, a senior superintendent in a division would allow a coke dealer to flourish because he... Will control the community. Well, he knows. He has information as to who breaking into who house the thief what and so on and so on. So the balancing act was he's allowed to carry on his trade to some extent and he gives out information. But while we were developing that, mm -hmm. Singapore was developing zero tolerance. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the 57 year exper experiment for both countries, mm -hmm. Singapore's first world developed safe. They don't have carnival. Trinidad is a... They don't have carnival. This country has a carnival mentality and it's not once a year. It's every week. So I want to ask you this then. Productivity. Are Let's we finish. victims of our own culture? Of course we are. Every week. How high is productivity on a Monday? Extremely low. Everybody's tired from Sunday and Saturday and Friday. And it I starts the party. It starts on Thursday. Yeah, yeah, but that wasn't always the case though. When I was growing up, I used to remember on a Thursday from lunchtime, mm -hmm. the supermarkets had to block off the alcohol. Right. That was a law. Mm -hmm. that they had to come with, with something and, and hide all the alcohol. Well, shops used to close on a Tuesday when I was a little boy. Because of that. I don't Gros know if it's that, but... No, shops, but groceries yeah. and supermarkets, they used to close half. No, that was the law because right. of the alcohol. You couldn't sell alcohol. And I don't right. know why that particular day and that particular time. I don't know why either. And I remember the first time I read a sign that said, so-and-so authorized to retail alcohol any day, any time. Mm -hmm. And I thought, we're going to go down the rabbit hole with this one. Well, listen. We destroy the family. We destroy any sense of propriety. You just ask. Education is key. You can have all that. There's a law that says you can't get a bar license within a three mile radius of a church mm -hmm. or a school. That's never been enforced. Mm -hmm. in, in fact, we do the opposite. We close communities for fets mm -hmm. and inflict it on the children and on the elderly. elderly. We send a message that we have this carnival culture. Eric Williams said, mm -hmm. if Trinidad and Tobago could put the effort it puts into carnival into any other industry, we could put a man on the moon. Yeah. But we haven't done it. And we won't. Do you think then, and this is the last major question 50 percent of the population do vote do you think this is why that they have no faith in anything government state politics they now? have no faith in the system as it is because the the way it is structured it's it's you're wasting time shouldn't voting. that 50 percent get a turn at bat shouldn't they get a government that cleans up trinidad and show up, show up and vote show up and vote show up and vote Closing comments. <laughs> Show up and vote. Closing comments. As you, uh, I think what this society needs, we are in the information age, 
So stop listening to song bites from politicians. And if something is in the parliament, go look at it. Go listen. Go listen and do your own research. It's not um, rocket science. In fact, most of the, of the people in there can't qualify as rocket scientists. Some of them are abject failures, and that's why they're there. Go do your own research. Listen, I remember, in closing, when we, we were debating the amendments... Do you have as much time as you want, Jerez? Okay. You are limited. I know yeah. you, have other, you have court. Yeah. So let's get this. But when they were debating the um, amendments to the Motor Vehicle and Road Traffic Act, bringing in the point system, the merit point, and so on, the merit point might be the least of it. There were other, more draconian measures. We had serious measures that affected constitutional rights and so on. But the thing is, now that it is being implemented, everyone is completely the same, but, you know, this, this, is, this is hard. Yeah, but that's not just Trinidad, though. I mean, I mean, people woke up in Britain after Brexit. Mm -hmm. and, and they literally said, we didn't know you all were serious. I mean, that's what they said. That we didn't we didn't take it serious because we didn't know you all were serious. Mm -hmm. So no, it's not that. <laughs> whose responsibility that. is it though? Because is it the public's responsibility to stand guard against their government? Yes, it is. Democracy Shouldn't the is where the constitution do that. No, the <laughs> democracy is where the government is afraid of the people. Not the people are afraid of the government. Indeed. The people must police the government. Do we need more activists? I think we I think we, we spend so much of our time in politics and not enough of our time in management of the country. No, listen, no one is listening. No one is listening. Something is happening in the parliament and very few people listen. What is the go to you Somebody said in this law that you brought here today, mm -hmm. the most draconian part of this law is that a matter could be intercepted and deemed national security that you who are going to be charged can't hear and that your lawyer cannot argue for you oh, that, that's and that an advocate mm -hmm. in your absence it's not limited to national security it's under 6-2 so um, you could be tried mm -hmm. in your absence no the mm, mm, a part of the trial would be heard in your absence and you're not entitled to your own advocate. Correct. And that is mind-boggling. Because the court is going to hire... Somebody, appoint somebody... To represent, to represent you. your interests in a criminal matter mm -hmm. that the state is bringing against you. Yeah. Now... Have, have we gone mad? You have to ask independent senators that. Because I raised that, that point. And you know the NDA Attorney General stood up and said something that um, reeks of rank dishonesty. He referred to civil proceedings, um, something called an Anton Pillar order, which is a civil search warrant and civil proceedings where the court would appoint a special advocate to supervise the search and how the search is done and whether everything, you know. But the thing is, that's just supervision. At the end of the day, you still get disclosure of what you have to get. So he used that analogy to say, well... It already exists. Yeah, but... If it already obtains, we can do it again. <coughs> but what obtains is not what he's advocating no, for. No, no. He's, he's advocating for cloak and dagger. Yes. Imagine you justice. hire a lawyer. This is now... This mm -hmm. is now you are going to be taken before a court. Mm -hmm. Blind to the proceedings. Mm -hmm. You are not allowed you are part of the proceedings you are part you are the proceedings right but you are not party to the proceedings and you can't defend you yourself you are not party to a part of the proceedings which i in my view is the most important part because you are seeking to when you can't evidence. qualify that you can't no, you shouldn't you shouldn't you shouldn't qualify that no part you, right? no part of uh -huh. any matter should be outside that's already the law that you cannot try a man behind his back unless he forces you to if he misbehaves in the court and so on and makes it impossible for the trial to continue with his presence, then the court can take him downstairs and the trial takes place in his absence. But that's... A special case. Yes. Outside of that, everything that But this Attorney General is about to legitimize the state bringing charges against citizens that they cannot be physically present for yeah. and have their choice of attorney. Yes. That is insane. It is insane. I'm glad, I'm glad you, you, you said it that way. But you know what's amazing? You would say it. 
and there are nine independent senators who apparently see nothing wrong with it. Well, there are nine, eight, because Miss Truth, Miss Truth abstained. We still have, we still have an appeal system, and we still have, we, we have to put our faith in our judges mm -hmm. that at some point they will realize the unconstitutionality of this thing, and if all of that does not serve us, we have a privy council. We have a privy council. Still. Would this, if a matter of this nature reach the Privy Council, would they allow this? No, <laughs> there's no way they would allow this. That's a saving grace. That's the one thing that... What is the next step for the people here? Well, the minute it is um, proclaimed, you... Um, so it's, it's, it's at the stage where it could strike be proclaimed? It no, it has to go to the House today. I believe it um, at one thirty, I think. And the opposition has to give them the support. I don't believe they would. I don't believe any su sensible um, opposition. No matter how you try to tinker and tweak, that's rubbish. If you tinker and tweak, so and this is supposed to fail in the parliament. Today. It is supposed to fail. Yes. So the country is relying on the opposition to do its job. Yes. Safeguard the democracy. Mm -hmm. Because the independent senators who had the op opportunity to do it did not. That's the first thing. One of the things. Let me close by. L listen. The way we appoint a president, it has to change because the electoral college appoints the president. The electoral college is made up. It's more leverage. Uh, it's more I I. And that, that, that president who is appointed by a political party, who has the majority in the parliament, then appoints nine independent senators, like E. L. Ouch. It's, it's 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 bait and switch. Mm -hmm. It's it's to make you feel that it's independent. There's but there's no real independence, no. and we need to fix that, and we need to change we all of it. Even how the speaker of the house is appointed, but that's a yeah. whole other conversation. Right. And I think we gotta come back at that. But so let, let me just close by. I have to pay um, kudos to the last batch of independent senators, most of whom were young people. There was one, Jennifer Raful. Um, Melissa Ramke soon, Toril Shriki soon, a few others. There are some old ones too. But the thing is, they understood their function and acted as a check and balance against, against state abuse. Yes, not now. Not now. That has to change. We got to do some more of this. We got to do a part two to this. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Wayne. No problem. You've been watching Plain Talk. You got a lot of information. By the time you see this, it would have it would have passed through the parliament and we're waiting to find out what the opposition does and then what the government's response is this is insane this is a government that seems bent on 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 political hegemony and and entrenching itself at the expense of human rights and civil liberties and i think that the people of trinidad and tobago now need to stop playing cheap political games and start to take these issues seriously. Someone said in another theater that after these things become law, it is much harder to stop them. Pay attention to Nan Tobago. It is about everything in your country that is at risk. Until next time, stay safe to Nan Tobago.